All right, guys, we'd just like to say welcome to the gun club. This video I put together because everybody's going crazy with COVID-19 and we wanted to make sure that you guys actually had kind of a, somewhat of a foundation to start actually going and getting your guns because there's a lot the gun sales are up. We saw, what was that, like 300% increase in gun sales for March. It was unreal. So the point of this is what gun do you need to get? And you guys know I'm not a huge 1911 fan, but uh, we do have a 1911 here on the table. We had a revolver there as well. And then obviously my daily carry, which is my Glock 26. So let's talk about what gun to get and, and how to actually pick out that gun. So you're going to go to the gun store and you're going to get lots of bad advice. You're going to get people that say, oh, get a, uh, get a revolver because it's easy and all you got to do is pull the trigger. And uh, that's, that, so that's all you need. And then they're going to get guys that say, well, it should be a 1911 and don't buy a caliber that doesn't start with a four. And then you're going to get the tactical guys. That'll tell you, get a Glock, should be a Glock 19, should be a Glock 19 chamber to 9mm, should be a Glock 19 chamber to 9mm, that's a Glock. Um, <laughs> so, the, you're going to you're gonna get this plethora of people that are going to give you all this advice. So let me dumb this down for you a little bit. <clears throat> if I was buying a gun today and I didn't know anything about firearms, I would buy a Glock 19 and I would buy a bunch of spare magazines for it if, that was, if I was going to have one firearm. And the reason for that is because a Glock 19 is a good size. I can carry it if I need to carry it. It can be a full loadout on, a, on like a duty belt. And it, can, it is also a decent self-defense gun. And so it's a good multi-purpose defensive pistol. The magazines are cheap for it. Spare parts are endless for it. And everybody that knows guns knows how to use it. So you can get lots of help with it. So to me, Glock 19, something like a Glock 19, Glock 26, Glock 17, somewhere in that range. I like 9mm because uh, I understand the ballistic advantages of it. Also, the ammo is readily available. So to me, the 9mm would be the, the, the best option. If you're going to buy this, stick to common calibers. 357 Magnum, 40, 40 cal, 9mm, maybe 357 Sig, even though that's a little bit un more uncommon. Stick to those common calibers. Don't go out and buy a 10mm. 10mm, it's not always the easiest to find ammo for. It certainly is not the easiest to find bulk ammo for unless you're ordering online. And then even then you run into some limitations. So I would stick to something like a 9mm or a 45 personally. Okay, why would I stay away from a 1911? Well, 1911 is a great gun. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of 1911s, but they are good guns. And I can take care of anything with a 1911 that I can take care of with my 9mm. The reason I'm not a huge fan of 1911s is because if you're a new shooter, a 9mm is significantly easier to shoot than a 45. And most 1911s are chambered in 45, even though you can't get them chambered in 9mm. Uh, the, the vast majority of them are 45. <clears throat> and the vast majority of the ones that you're going to get at the store are going to be 45. So the other reason I don't like them is because having a safety on there seems great unless you're not a trained person and then you haven't built that muscle memory to as soon as you draw to actually flip that safety off and bring it back in when you bring your gun back in. So you want to, uh, you, you, you're working on those muscle memories, but right now we've got a person that's not particularly well trained and they're going out to get their first firearm so they can defend their family during this COVID-19 crap. So a couple other reasons I don't like a 1911 is because they're more complicated on the internal and so it creates issues for a new shooter who's not familiar with firearms to try to deal with that and then you're having them deal with it with a, with a weapon being cocked and locked and with the safety on when they're not quite comfortable with firearms. That safety gets slipped real easy. This is a, a very simple trigger pull and so we, we, want to, uh, we want to kind of alleviate some of those safety issues. Anything that's striker fire, Pick, SIG, SIG 320s, Glocks, M&Ps, H&Ks, they're, they're any, any of these pistols that are striker fired, I think those are great options. Like I said, if it was me, I would get something like a Glock 26 or a Glock 19, throw a weapon light on there, and you've got a lot of capabilities within one firearm, and I think that is a great thing for anybody that's just getting into this. The thing that I would stay away from is I would stay away from revolvers, because people that say, well, all you got to do is pull the trigger, well, you're not initially talking about the The people that say that, for one, that most of them have never been in a gunfight. Two the gunfights don't typically follow this mentality or this narrative that they think they're going to get. I remember I met a guy that he carried, he always carried a gun around his ankle 
And he said, well, the idea is, is that I would throw my wallet on the ground when I go to hand it to him, and then when I go down to pick it up, I can draw this gun. And it's like, that's a very specific situation you think you're going to get into, and you lift out every other situation that's possible to you. Now, revolvers are great firearms, but revolvers in a lot of ways are harder to use, and here's, here's why. It is much easier to throw a magazine in here and pull that slide back than it is to deal with a revolver and actually put... The, do, 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 a, do a reload with your revolver, put the little thing in there, spin, spin your bullets off, put the little speed loader in, spin your bullets off, put six things into six things as opposed to one thing into one thing. It's significantly easier to do it on a, on a semi-automatic pistol. People say that revolvers don't jam, and that's a bunch of crap. Revolvers have problems too. Cylinders come out of time. Um, you, you can get gas leak off. There's lots of things that can happen with these guns. And though the malfunctions are less common with a revolver, when they happen, it typically takes a gunsmith to fix it. You can't typically clear it yourself, certainly not in a fight or at the range. So then you're kind of SOL. <clears throat> Whereas the semi-automatic, unless the gun blows up, you can generally take care of it with magazine change. So the other thing is you're teaching somebody that doesn't know how to use guns. You're either teaching them how to use a, you're trying to teach them how to use a long trigger pull in this double action firearm, or you're having them come back and cock that hammer. And then all of a sudden we've got a very, very light trigger pull for somebody that is just not that familiar with firearms. So something like a striker fire trigger pull that's going to be like between three and a half, six and a half pounds, depending on the brands, I think that's a much better option. So if you're new to guns and you're going to the gun counter and they're telling you all these different guns to get and they're showing you all these different firearms, make sure you get a quality firearm. Make sure you get something like a Glock, an M&P, an H&K, a Sig Sauer, something that's a quality firearm. I'm not going to go over the brands that are not quality firearms in this because people will get offended, but you can, you can certainly look at some of my other videos on it and you can certainly look at other gun guys out there and see what they're considering to be quality firearms. But the thing, the, the thing that I would stay away from, stay away from complicated platforms that use hammer fire guns uh, simply because it's a lot going on internally and if you have to deal with anything on there, it's very difficult for you to actually try, try, to, try to fix all that. Stay away from things that have an external safety simply because you don't have the training necessary to deal with an external safety and so it, it seems to be a better option than when you're talking about a defensive pistol, something that you have to draw really quick and get out and get it on target, well, maybe I don't want to have a safety to deal with that, and when I'm not familiar with the firearms. How many times have we seen somebody where they, they took their firearm and they went and they couldn't figure out what it was and they had to look at it and then you said your safety's on. So, anyways, that, uh, so that's why I would stay away from those, a, a, from, 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 from a complicated hammer fire pistol, a more complex hammer fire pistol for your first gun. This is, again, this is just addressing the COVID-19 people that are going out to buy their first firearm. And then stay away from that revolver because the gun store counter guys are going to try to sell you that. And keep in mind, don't ask for advice from gun store counters because gun store counters, unless you're, you don't know whether you're dealing with an honest gun store or not, and some gun stores, because they have a, a, a surplus of one type of firearm as opposed to another type of firearm, they're going to push that firearm. So if they come in there and they know you're looking for a Glock 19, but they're all out of Glock 19s, they're going to sell you on something else and they're going to say, this is better than the Glock 19. This is the, this is the Glock killer or whatever it is. So go in there with an idea of certain types of pistols that you're going to look for, whether that's the M&P 9, uh, compact, full size, whatever, Glock 17, 19, 26, something along those lines. Stick with 9mm, but if you don't want to be 9mm, certainly stick with a readily available caliber, a common caliber. So again, guys, this is not talking to everybody that's had firearms. This is not telling you what firearm to get. There's lots of guys that know how to run their guns with a, uh, with a 1911 and chambered in 45, and they can run their gun better than I can with a, with a Glock 19 chambered in 9mm. So there, there's, certainly, there's certainly arguments for all these different calibers and these different types of guns. But the thing that I'm talking about specifically is for a new shooter, somebody that is just trying to, to, to get a firearm to protect their family. They don't have time to do a bunch of training. The only training they're going to get is by watching YouTube. We want to get those guys set up on a path to success with their firearm. So thanks again for watching. If you guys like this content, please like, subscribe, share, tag a friend that you think might need this information. And uh, even if you don't agree with the information, like let's just let's just talk about the logical points of it and see kind of where we can where we can get in this dialogue. Make sure if you got some other suggestions, throw it down in the comment box. I always love to read those and hear about them. So thanks again for watching, guys. Remember, freedom comes in all calibers.